Hi everybody, welcome back to Geezer Rider and this video on heated controllers or heat trollers, right? This is the thermostat, rheostat, whatever you want to call it, that controls the heat to your powered um, jacket, vest, pants, gloves, footwear that doesn't have a control built into it. Um, most of the heated gear, heated garments that have a control built into it also run on a battery with a couple of exceptions. We'll get to one of those when we review the heated pants. Um, but for right now, we're going to review a heat troller. And this is from Warm and Safe. And this is a wireless heat troller. Name is a little misleading. And all that means is the actual part with the dials on it is either Bluetooth or RF or some wireless um, manner of controlling it. And um, this is the part number for what we bought, if you're interested in looking. Dual remote heat troller. And there's a note that they've already synced the remote to the base unit and it's ready to go. So they uh, give you the remote, which is this part, comes with, uh, runs off a couple of AA batteries. They give you a couple, I think they're alkaline. What I would suggest you do is get some, pay the extra couple bucks a pack of, of AAA batteries and buy lithium. Um, they're gonna last you forever and you just don't have to worry about it. You just wanna open it up every now and then make sure there's no corrosion in there. But the lithiums also don't tend to leak. Like even some of the alkalines will leak a little bit over time. If you look, and we'll try and get this to you so you can see, this base is a little square base that goes on here, and this held on with tiny Phillips. They say it's a P1, but it might be a P0 screw. They're in the bag when you get the um, heat troller. Be careful when you open it that they don't fall out. They're tiny, and if they get down in your carpet, you might likely never find them again. Also, be very gentle when you go to screw them in because it would be real easy to strip them out. Maybe the only design failing that I see here, it's kind of a machine screw into plastic when it could have been threaded um, to make it a little more durable because you are going to have to put new batteries in from time to time. And again, we keep saying over and over again that we're going to try and, you know, get use out of this, these items for 5, 10, 15 years. So what does this have? Obviously, we've got a yellow dial, we've got a red dial, we've got an LED for power, we've got an LED for use, and when you turn it on, the LED lights, you turn the other one on, the other LED lights, pretty straightforward. Uh, when you turn it on, it's low, and it'll flash a few times to tell you that it's um, adjusting the heat each time you rotate it once everything's on, and you know, fully clockwise is, is high heat. Um, I already tested this with the heated jacket. That's how I knew when we were talking in another segment that the jacket drew six amps and we did it through this troller. So this can be put in your pocket. It even comes with a little lanyard in a case that you can hang off of your wrist or something if you wanted to, or just, you know, use it as an attachment point on bikes so you don't lose it. It comes in the package with a, a piece of double-sided tape. Uh, with Velcro on uh, in the middle that you can peel apart so that you can mount it. You know, obviously, if you had a, you know, fairing bag or a tank bag, maybe you could even put it in there. You'd have to work on it. But the idea is you can stow this out of the way. And what attracted me to this style, you know, beyond just this particular brand was just all the extra wires you would have external to your body and the little leather belt pouch and stuff that you know, you have to have access to while you're riding to adjust the temperature. And, you know, somebody says, oh, well, you just clip it to your belt. It's no big deal. Well, that is kind of a big deal. You're trying to stay warm. So that means you have to lift up the waistband of your jacket to reach your belt line to adjust this thing. You're letting cold air in and you're fussing with all this when you're trying to ride, you know, hopefully not. Hopefully you're doing it at a stoplight or something, but you know, something else to keep in mind. So again, I'm not overly fashion conscious, but you know, uh, cleaner lines if you're into that and you know just less overall fuss and um, things in your way so this is the way I chose to go with the um, what we're calling a remote troller and it's dual and if it was single 
all you would get was that, right? It would be half this size and it would just have one dial. Um, for what you pay for this, and, and I got a pretty good deal on it, seems like most everything had around $100 to $150 barrier to entry with the exception of the heated insoles. They were like 49 bucks for what we bought. You can watch that video, series of videos on that um, to get more information about that. The instructions are pretty simplistic because there's not a lot to say. Um, they do have some detailed text inside. There's a pretty decent warranty on all the gear that we've reviewed. I haven't gone too deep into that because again, that's part of your homework when you select something. Um, the diagrams are a little cartoony, but you get the general idea looking at it, what's going on. Um, and this troller on its own combined the two channels and if you saw a yellow dial and you saw a red dial well there's a yellow connector and a red connector so you know which is going to which one to your glove one to your jacket one to your pants one to your jacket something like that um, this can handle 15 amps so this can run your entire heated gear setup okay without you know, you might have to put some Y cables in line to split the feed off to two different things, depending on how your, your gear is situated. But you could do everything you needed to do with just this setup if you wanted to. And I've got a Y cable on here now because I'm going to do a split feed for a, a reason. When we get to the heated pants segment, we'll talk about that. So this did not, this Y cable did not come with the, the heat troller, so I'll take it off. Pretty basic power. And we've talked about power from the battery or power from the uh, the cigarette lighter adapter, right? And we just plug it in there. That's going to fire this thing up. So let's go ahead and do that now. It flashes to let you know that it got power, right? And it's looking for the controller. And if I was to turn the controller on and I'll turn the yellow side on, it flashes and it flashes every time that I adjust it to let you know that it received it. And after a while, it'll get to the target heat and stop. So we're communicating. I'll do the same with the red. There we go. It's working there. All right. So depending on if you watch the um, heated jacket segment, you know they're can be a little intimidating all the connections in there hopefully we spelled that out for you uh, pretty easily they're not telling you which color to connect to what just that you can put them to different items and then you just have to remember in your head oh i had yellow connected to my gloves and i had red connected to my jacket or you know yellow connected to my jacket and red connected to my pants whatever it may be couldn't be easier What's cool about this, because it doesn't have yet another pigtail coming out of it with the um, potentiometers on it that you would have to strap onto yourself somewhere, as you can put this inside, we showed that, um, that pocket inside the, um, the gerbing jacket, for example, where you could put it either in the battery or you can tuck this guy and it's completely in there. You just leave it in there. The only thing that's going to stick out of that jacket is the power connector that's going to feed this, right? What you're going to connect to your motorcycle battery feed that's coming out. Or, you know, if you're using a um, power port or cigarette lighter adapter in the fairing or wherever on your bike, you know, there's going to be one cable coming out from your jacket, probably from this, right? Connect to that. That's it. That's the only thing you have to disconnect when you get off the bike. Right? The only thing you're going to want to do before you do that is turn this off. Turn this off or any heat controller, turn it off before you disconnect power from the receiving side of it or you turn the bike off and turn the bike on, have the bike running before you turn power on your heat troller. This prevents surges and other problems that you will thank me for later. Uh, and again, you only want to use any setting higher than the lowest setting when the bike is running above idle RPMs. And usually when you look at the capacity of the charging system, when somebody provides a chart for your bike, it's going to say, I'm making 575 watts at 2000 RPM. Okay. 
sport bike, that's not a big deal. You're probably idling it near 2000 RPM. If you're running a larger displacement V-twin Harley, that's darn near maybe your cruising speed, right? So think about the operational range of where you can use all your gear at the same time or combinations of your gear at the same time in any setting above the lowest setting. And I do realize that I keep harping on this thing of power, but it is not talked about anywhere near enough um, other than just as a glancing comment in the other overviews and reviews that I've watched, both just general talks about the subject matter and you know any specific garment review. The other cool thing about this is if you look at it, it looks kind of rubberized, and it is. They claim you can completely submerge this. You can wash the garment. You can put it in a bucket full of, uh, you know, downy or, or, or something or woolite and wash your jacket and have this inside of there. And it's going to be perfectly fine. I would think you would want to disconnect the connectors and dry everything out real well to prevent corrosion. But they claim you're not going to hurt this. So that's a bit extreme. I'm probably going to take it out when I go to wash my jacket. But why, why am I excited about that? What that tells me is that this thing's not going to be hurt by rain, a little bit of rain. You know, for some reason, the jacket becomes compromised. I get some water in there or, you know, I'm walking around at an event and fall into a puddle. You know, I'm not going to roast my darn heat controller uh, in the process and, and have a cold ride home on top of all the other indignities, right? So... They really thought about it and, you know, and just decided to go ahead and weatherproof this thing completely. And I really like that. So we will do the actual operation of this um, in two different videos coming up. One will be the heated, um, I'm sorry, it will be the um, combination where I'm going to put the entire garment package together, the jacket, the gloves, the pants, the, the heated footwear to show you how I managed to get all these different products that I bought together. The only two products I bought that were the same brand is um, actually none of them. None of them are the same brand. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's another thing. You don't have to do one-stop shopping. Um, you don't have to buy all Cabela's heated gear, you know, Cabela's heated jacket, Cabela's, you know, if you, if you were just buying heated gear for hunting, for example, you know, you can get different pieces and work together. Most of them are designed to work together. Um, some of the stuff with the little key fob remote, um, for the battery operated stuff, that's a whole different story. You're probably going to want to stick with one brand if you go that route, but that's not what we're reviewing here. So when we, when we do the entire outfit together and we do a, another current draw test and we'll do the entire um, outfit current draw test. We'll go ahead and we'll actually operate this device. But the general principles are here, whether it's remote or it's wired, you know, you have a couple of leads, you have a single or a dual troller, you either run it directly to a garment or you put in a Y cable and run it to two different garments. So one side can be low and then the other side can be medium, stuff like that. Um, just all the same concerns as always. Think about the overall power consumption and draw. Look to see that they have a decent warranty. Check the reviews online. This was very well reviewed. I didn't find any negative comments about it. If you lose or break this, you can buy a replacement. Um, if you look around, you can find them reasonably priced. So... Um, you know, some people think of this like, you know, an easy pass or garage door open or something. When you get where you're going, you put it out of sight, out of mind on the bike. You know, you don't want somebody, uh, you know, pulling your garage door open or your easy pass off your bike. You don't want them pulling this off either. But should something happen to it, for whatever reason, you can get another one for a reasonable price, under well under $50, including shipping, and just resync it again to the base unit, no problem. That's pretty cool. They're not forcing you into buying the complete combo kit again. Um, there are a lot of misreading ads out for this. And I'll warn you to, to get verification that when you're going to buy this, it's not just this replacement. If you see a price that looks too good to be true, it probably is. And regardless of what they show you in the picture, what they show you everything, 
you might wind up seeing only this in your mailbox. Be careful. Voice of experience. <laughs> so take my word for it. Uh, very lengthy and uh, nasty return process, but I got it resolved. So, um, you know, hunt for the bargain, but buyer beware. Again, qual quality and value over you know, absolute, just doing the cheapest thing possible. So again, you know, we're going to review this again, um, next fall after we've ridden with it, you know, through this fall, this winter and the spring, it's gotten wet a few times, um, ridden with it in a variety of conditions, decide where I'm going to keep this on my bike. Haven't quite made up my mind yet. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas. We'll see how they pan out and go from there. Ride safe. Namaste.